Hi, I'm Guy from Scoop. Ubiquity just introduced a powerful new feature into the Unify Network application, object-oriented networking. And the goal is simple, make IT easier, faster, and more flexible to manage while giving you enterprise-grade policy control. So what is object-oriented networking? In Unify, objects are intended to simplify configuration for routing, firewalls, and quality of service. The idea is for you to create rules from the objects menu, which will then apply these policies for you across the various segments of your setup. What makes this cool is just how much time it'll save when working on larger networks. It condenses your entire setup into just a single page, instead of having to configure your rules in all the various parts of your Unify interface. It also means you're less likely to overlook configurations within the many elements of your setup. Let's look at an example of a typical setup. Here's a multi-WAN environment where we need to split and limit access. All traffic on our default network should use WAN 1, while everyone on our guest VLAN is restricted to WAN 2. In addition, we want to prioritize certain real-time applications while restricting access to other apps. Also, we'd like to supply internet only to authorized devices. Let's see how it's done quick and easy with object networking. All configurations are done in the Settings and then Objects menu. Our first objective is to configure the default network. Let's start by prioritizing the default network and productivity apps while restricting others. Create a new object and name it. Select Networks and check your default network. Enable the Secure menu and in the Internet section, check App. Then select the apps you'd like to block. We're choosing TikTok and YouTube. The list of supported apps that Ubiquity provides is quite extensive, so it would be easier to type the targeted app's name in the search bar to speed things along. At the time of recording, there's no app group or category support, but perhaps Ubiquity will add something like this in a future update. In the same menu, check Domain and enter the domain for the apps. Then click Add for each. Now, enable the QoS menu, check App, and select the apps to be prioritized. For our example, we'll go with Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. Let's select WAN 1. Next, select Prioritize to give these apps priority. Click Add. Now, it's best practice to set a speed limit for the default network so as not to rely on the ISP's limitations, which could be unstable. To do so, you'll need to create a new object and configure it as such. Let's do that now and name it. Select Networks and check your default network. Enable the QoS menu, ensure that all traffic is checked, select Limit and enable both Download and Upload limits. We've set ours to 50 megabits per second. Finally, click Add. That's the default network sorted. Our next task is to create the guest object and set the rules and limitations for it based on the requirements of our network. Let's route all guest traffic through WAN 2 and apply the relevant restrictions. Create a new object and name it. Select Networks and check the VLAN network you're applying the rules to. Enable the Secure menu and in the Internet section, select Allow List, check Everything, and set the schedule to always. This setting allows any connection out to the internet. Then in the local section, select block list, check network, select the default network and click save. The local section is for you to block or allow access to local resources. This is useful for networks that only want to provide internet access, as we have just done, or only give local access to devices or networks. Next, enable the Root menu, check All Traffic, and select the WAN 2 interface. The kill switch option here means that if the WAN 2 goes down, the VLAN network will lose all internet access and not redirect to WAN 1 for connectivity. We're leaving it on because we don't want that failover in this example. But in some cases, you may want to disable it so your guests can have internet access. Finally, enable the QoS menu, check All Traffic, Select WAN 2 as the outbound interface. 
Then select the limit option and set the throughput limits. We're setting it to 25 megabits per second for upload and download. We'll also set the download burst on both to short, so our users get a better experience while connected to the network. The long option here provides better client speed test results, but we value the user experience and reliability more. Perhaps you'll choose otherwise. Click add and you're done. Now we can test whether the objectives were realized. You can do a ping test to confirm the domain blocking. A trace route to ensure VLAN traffic is routed via WAN2. And a speed test to confirm that your speed limit is active. Unify's object-oriented networking tool automatically configures rules with the correct priority, eliminating the need for multiple interface adjustments seen in previous versions of Unify Network. This makes setup much faster and simpler. Another awesome feature is the policy table. This offers a centralized view of rules with a host of filtering options and the ability to view or edit policies on the fly. This new feature really streamlines network management. Now that's what we call a unified and intuitive approach to rule and policy configuration. We couldn't be happier with Ubiquiti's efforts to include this into Unify Network 9.4 and look forward to seeing what they come up with next. Please stay tuned for more updates and thank you for watching. I'm Guy from Scoop.